Have you ever wondered how an ancient Roman legion would set up camp within only a few hours? Picture 5,000 Roman soldiers, a formidable force, marching towards the horizon. Their destination, a promising sight by the river. As the legion descends upon the area, the camp commander steps forward, his eyes scanning the landscape with practiced precision. Why a river site, you ask? Well, the answer lies in the strategic brilliance of the Roman military. Close proximity to a water source not only provides the necessary sustenance for the legion, but also offers a natural barrier against potential enemy attacks. The commander's gaze falls on the river, its waters shimmering under the afternoon sun. He observes the river's current, determining if it's swift enough to deter enemy crossings, yet calm enough to provide a stable water source for his men. He then turns his attention to the surrounding terrain, looking for any signs of potential threats or weaknesses. The commander's survey doesn't stop there. He takes into account the wind direction, for the smoke from their cooking fires should not betray their position to lurking enemies. He contemplates the gradient of the land, as water runoff from rains should not flood their tents. He scrutinizes the soil, for it should be firm enough to support their shelters and trenches, yet soft enough to allow for efficient digging. Once satisfied, he signals his approval. The air buzzes with anticipation. Five thousand men stand ready, their eyes on their commander, awaiting his orders. They've travelled far, and the promise of rest is within their grasp. But there's work to be done. For the Romans, setting up a camp is as crucial as the battles they fight, their survival hinging on the security and efficiency of their temporary home. The commander's voice cuts through the air, his orders crisp and clear. The chosen site, once a mere patch of land by the river, is about to transform into a fortified Roman encampment. With a suitable location secured, the real work begins. How could they build camp so quickly? Imagine commanding a group of 5,000 strong, agile and well-trained young men with proper designation of tasks and responsibilities. Things can get built very, very quickly. You may ask, were fresh trees cut down for every camp? The answer is a resounding yes. Fresh trees were cut down for most new camps. In a well-oiled machine like the Roman Legion, every man has a role. As our legionnaires begin to settle into their temporary riverside home, tasks are swiftly assigned. A fifth of the men, a thousand strong, are tasked with the lumbering job of cutting down nearby trees. Simultaneously, another thousand men are ordered to dig trenches. The remaining 3,000 men are tasked with setting up tents, preparing meals and guard duty. The first line of defence for any Roman camp is the trench. The Roman legion, a well-oiled machine of 5,000 men, swiftly and efficiently begins the process of digging these defensive trenches. The trenches trace the perimeter of the camp, forming a formidable barrier against any potential enemy. The soldiers work in unison to etch out a trench that is about four feet deep and approximately three feet wide. The depth and width of the trench are crucial. They're designed to be a formidable obstacle for any enemy foot soldiers and cavalry, but a trench in itself is not enough. To add an extra layer of protection, wooden spikes cut from the nearby trees by a designated team of legionnaires are added into the mix. These spikes, known as stimuli, are about two feet long and carved to a sharp point. The process of adding these spikes into the trenches is a meticulous one. They are placed at an angle, protruding outwards from the base of the trench. The aim is to deter, injure or even impale any enemy foolish enough to attempt a direct assault on the Roman camp. The spikes are arranged in a staggered pattern that makes it extremely difficult for an enemy to navigate through safely. This arrangement, coupled with the depth and width of the trench, creates a formidable defensive barrier that is designed to break the momentum of any attacking force. Once the spikes are in place, the soldiers then camouflage the trenches with branches and leaves, making them almost invisible to the unsuspecting eye. This added element of surprise enhances the effectiveness of the Roman camp's first line of defence. The work of digging and spiking the trenches is a shared responsibility, with every man of the Legion understanding the importance of this task. It's a testament to the discipline, unity and efficiency of the Roman Legion, where each man knows his role and plays his part in securing the camp. Once the trenches are dug and spiked, the camp's perimeter is secure. 
the Legion can then focus on the other essential tasks of setting up the camp. Confident in the knowledge that their first line of defense is in place. The next step in the process was building the wall, vital for the defense of the camp. The Roman soldiers, now turned engineers, would begin this task immediately after laying out the camp's perimeter. Most camps were built from wood, cut from the surrounding area trees. Each soldier was responsible for carrying a delabra, a type of pickaxe, and a saw, proving useful in both battle and construction. With these tools, they'd fell trees, strip them of their branches, and cut them into the required lengths. The wall, known as the vallum, was typically about three meters high. It consisted of a row of wooden stakes driven into the ground with horizontal beams laid across them. A second row of stakes was then placed on top with the tip sharpened to a point. This made the wall not only a physical barrier but also a lethal one for any would-be intruders. The speed at which these walls were constructed is truly remarkable. A well-drilled legion could have the wall up within a matter of hours. This was, in large part, due to the Roman military's rigorous training and strict discipline. The soldiers knew their roles and carried them out with precision, allowing the construction process to proceed smoothly and swiftly. But the wall wasn't just a hastily thrown-together barricade. It was a product of careful planning and strategic thinking. The Romans understood that the wall's effectiveness as a defence mechanism depended not just on its height, but also on its angle. So they built it with a slight inward tilt. This made it harder for enemies to climb and easier for the Roman soldiers to defend. The end result was a robust and formidable barrier, a physical manifestation of the Roman military's might and ingenuity. It's no wonder that these temporary camps often left a lasting impression on the landscape, their walls standing strong long after the soldiers had moved on. The wall stood as a formidable barrier, a testament to Roman engineering and strategic planning. Shelter is a necessity, even in a temporary camp. With defensive trenches in place, our legionnaires turn their attention to the task of shelter construction. The scent of fresh-cut timber fills the air as they work, each man knowing his role and performing it with practiced efficiency. Half of the remaining men, approximately 2,500, are assigned to this task, turning trees into tents. They work in teams, some chopping down the timber, others hauling it back to camp, and still others shaping it into the necessary components for shelter construction. It's a process that's as much about teamwork as it is about skill and the Romans have it down to a science. As the tents begin to rise, the layout of the camp becomes clear. At its heart stands the commander's tent, larger and more luxurious than the others, a symbol of authority and a focal point for the legionnaires. It's positioned strategically on the highest ground, offering a clear view of the entire camp. Radiating out from this central point are the barracks, lines of identical tents housing ten men each. They're arranged in a grid-like pattern, allowing for easy navigation and efficient use of space. Each tent is identical, ensuring a sense of equality among the ranks. On the outskirts of the camp, closest to the river, is the cooking area. Here, large fires are lit, around which the men gather to share meals and stories. The smell of roasting meat mingles with the scent of the river, creating a comforting aroma that serves as a reminder of home. As the sun sets, the legionnaires step back to admire their work. The camp, once an empty patch of land, has been transformed into a bustling hub of activity. Tents dot the landscape, fires flicker in the twilight, and the sounds of laughter and conversation fill the air. With the tents up, the camp starts to resemble a miniature city. Even in the midst of a military campaign, the Romans understand the importance of creating a sense of community, a place where they can rest, regroup, and prepare for the challenges ahead. In a hostile territory, vigilance is key. Thus, as the last tent is erected and the day's work comes to an end, the duty of guarding the camp begins. A contingent of the legionnaires, roughly a tenth of the total force, is chosen for this critical task.
These soldiers are stationed at regular intervals around the camp's perimeter, their watchful eyes scanning the surrounding wilderness for any sign of danger. In addition, several guards are posted along the river's edge, alert for any enemy trying to approach the camp from the water. The shifts are divided into watches, each lasting a few hours, ensuring that the guards remain alert and focused. Communication among the guards is vital. They use a series of signals, from the hoot of an owl to the rustle of leaves, each with a specific meaning. A sudden change in these signals can alert the entire camp to an imminent threat. Another secret weapon the Romans used were the Molossian dogs. They were well trained and could hear, smell and sense things that humans could sometimes not. To protect them in battle, the Romans equipped these dogs with protective gear, such as spiked collars. These collars served dual purposes. They shielded the dog's necks from enemy weapons, and the sharp spikes could injure any attacker. Their strength and courage, combined with rigorous training, made them an effective deterrent to anyone daring to breach the Roman defences. With the guards in place, the camp is secure for the night. Imagine being a Roman soldier. How would you sleep in this encampment? The answer lies in the meticulous organisation of the Roman military. For a common soldier, slumber meant sharing space with seven others in a contubernium or a squad tent. This was not just a sleeping arrangement, but a unit of organisation, with each member playing a specific role, from the optio in charge to the common legionaries. They ate, slept and fought together, their lives intertwined in camaraderie and shared duty. Now, let's consider the centurions. These were the backbone of the Roman army, veteran soldiers who had risen through the ranks. A centurion was in charge of around 80 men, a century, and he was afforded his own tent. This was not only a mark of status but also a practicality, as the centurion would often hold meetings and plan strategies within his tent. Moving up the ranks, we reach the tribunes. These were high-ranking Roman officers, often from noble families. They had not only their own tents, but also their own staff and attendants. Luxury was a privilege of rank, and the tribunes certainly enjoyed theirs. Finally, we reach the pinnacle of the military hierarchy, the legatus, or the legion's general. The legatus was often a senator, a man of immense power and influence. His tent, known as the Praetorium, was a world apart. It was larger, more luxurious, and often included amenities such as a small bath. The Praetorium was also the administrative hub of the Legion, where the Legatus would receive reports, make decisions and strategize. From the common foot soldier to the top-ranking generals, everyone had their place in the encampment. The Roman military was a reflection of the society it served, structured and hierarchical. Now let's look at what they did to pass the time. But what if the threat of enemy use looms? When the Legion decides to decamp, they are faced with a strategic decision. Leaving a well-fortified camp behind could provide an advantageous position for an enemy. The threat of this potential enemy use could prompt the Roman legionnaires to take a drastic step, burning the camp. Next, the legionnaires would set about dismantling the wooden defences. The trenches, once a formidable deterrent, would be filled in. The spikes, previously a deadly trap for any attacking force, would be removed and piled up with the rest of the wood. In a cloud of smoke and ash, the once bustling camp is reduced to ruin. The legion, once again ready to march, would leave nothing but scorched earth behind, a stark reminder of their presence and a clear message to any who might follow in their footsteps.